Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. After an hour's long standstill, traffic moving again. I-10 East after a deadly crash last night. 14 states and one U.S. territory all voting today as part of Super Tuesday. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Virginia, and I'll have all the details coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. 67 warm degrees. It's uh, very humid out there. Not a nice start to your day. And there are storms in the forecast for this Super Tuesday. And good morning. It is Super Tuesday. It is March 3rd. It is a Tuesday. Uh, we work this morning shift, so tomorrow is going to be the exciting day for us when we get to share all the results from everything. All the elections all over the country. Uh, yeah, and especially, you know, stuff. Texas is one of the biggest ones, right? The most delegate. I think we have the most delegates. Second. Super Tuesday, or second. Second to California. Second to California. So that'll be good. Mm -hmm. So it'll be an interesting morning tomorrow morning for us, but I'm worried about weather. Well, I'll say this. So if, if you're planning on voting today, it should be just fine. I think good. most of today is going to be perfectly okay. It's tonight and early tomorrow morning. That's the time frame that we're going to watch for some storms, and some of those could be a little bit on the strong side, I think, especially as you get into the hill country tomorrow morning. Uh, right now, there's nothing to see really on radar. We've got a couple showers well to our north, but it's just cloudy. It's just humid. Uh, that's all we're worried about right now. There is a little bit of fog out there. I'll show you visibility in just a second. 67 degrees at the airport, 63 Bernie State, 65 Boulevard, 63 in Hondo. Again, cloudy skies to go around. And visibility, it's down a little bit. Gonzales, New Braunfels, you're seeing a little bit of fog too. And then along the coast for sure, visibility is starting to come down. Just like yesterday, some patchy fog is a possibility. And as we look at the forecast for today, again, most of Super Tuesday is going to be just fine. 78 degrees by 2 o'clock, 30% chance of rain. We'll make it all the way up to 80 degrees. Uh, a warm, humid day, but that's going to set the stage, of course, for that chance of storms tonight. We're going to break it all down for you coming up here in just a few minutes, but we got to talk traffic now, see how things are going out there on this early Tuesday morning. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone at home. And as you take a look at the map, you can see no incidents out there on the highways. It should slow you down, but we do have a little bit of construction out there. So uh, where's that construction as far as trans guy concerned? Well, right now, 37 at Carolina, you can see we do have some construction vehicles out there, but uh, not too many vehicles in either direction at this point. 37 at Jones here in the downtown vicinity, north and southbound lanes still running smoothly all the way through 35 and Alamo. And then take a look at 35 in Brooklyn, the upper and lower levels for north and southbound 35. So far, no delays, even up on the northeast side, 35 at Wiener. You can see the more than enough room, so make sure you buckle up as you head out this morning. David? Thank you, Officer Trujillo. New this morning, a man is in custody after the Bear County Sheriff's Office says he sent deputies on a chase that reached speeds of more than 100 miles an hour. The chase entered at Kelly Air Force Base. It started just after midnight near Acme and Groden. Bear County deputies were called out to a family violence call. They say the suspect got away in a black truck and started speeding to get away from the deputies. BCSO says he eventually crashed into a fence near Kelly. And they say he tried to run, jumped down 15 feet onto Highway 151, but he was then caught and arrested. The suspect was taken to the hospital because of injuries he got from his fall. Well, a deadly wreck on the east side caused a major traffic backup that left some motorists stranded for hours on Interstate 10. The crash happened just after 6.30 last night. This was near Foster Road. One person was killed, another taken to the hospital. We did receive calls from motorists earlier this morning that they had been stranded for five hours or more in the aftermath of that wreck. The road was shut down from 410 to 1604 for several hours. The medical examiner is trying to confirm the identity of the person who was killed. To the race for 2020, overnight a show of force and unity as Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar withdrew from the race and then announced they will back Joe Biden in the race for president. 14 states and one territory all voting today as part of Super Tuesday. States like California, here in Texas and North Carolina have over 1,300 delegates at play. ABC's Inez de la Cotera has the latest. Just hours before the biggest contest of the primary season, Joe Biden getting a major boost. Pete Buttigieg and now Amy Klobuchar both dropping out of the race for president and endorsing the former vice president. But he will also govern with his heart. Biden emotional as he accepted Mayor Pete's endorsement. He reminds me of my son, Bo. Biden's landslide win in South Carolina reshaping the race. Former presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke also throwing his support behind him as the party's moderates seem ready to come together to stop Bernie Sanders from winning the nomination. Let's put forward somebody who's actually a Democrat. 
But Sanders undeterred. The political establishment is getting nervous. And they look at rallies like this at St. Paul and they say, what's going on here? The Vermont senator drawing the biggest crowds of anyone in the race and arguing. Joe is a decent guy. He's just wrong with regard to his vision for the future. Super Tuesday will also be the first time Mike Bloomberg is on the ballot. After being repeatedly interrupted at a Fox Biden. News town hall, the billionaire, the former well, mayor, well, making it clear uh, he's not going uh, anywhere. I haven't even faced the voters once. Tulsi Gabbard and Elizabeth Warren are also still in the race. Polls will begin closing at 7 p.m. Eastern in Virginia and Vermont. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News in Alexandria, Virginia. And if you vote late this evening, a reminder, you have the right to vote if you are in line at a polling location when it closes at 7 o'clock. It is against the law for anyone to kick you out. If someone is trying to do so, be sure you stay in line and then call the Bear County Election Office at number 210-335-VOTE. Well, one of the added concerns this election season is, of course, the coronavirus. The Bear County Elections Department says they recognize the seriousness of the situation, and today's primary will continue as planned. Remember, polls will open at 7 a.m. In a statement, elections administrator Jackie Callanan says, in part, quote, although there is often hand sanitizer at the voting centers, we do encourage our voters to bring their own if they feel it's necessary. If voters wish to bring their own pen to sign in at the registration table, they may do so rather than use the community pen, end quote. And speaking of the coronavirus, North Star Mall will remain shut down today for deep cleaning after an infected coronavirus evacuee visited the shopping center. Elsewhere overnight, Georgia confirmed its first two cases of the virus. On the West Coast, another person has, was taken to the hospital by ambulance from the nursing home near Seattle where the virus has turned deadly. And in New York, authorities are taking drastic steps to protect the public, transportation, sanitizing all subway stations and buses. Another big case for justices on the Supreme Court docket today. They will hear arguments on whether the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is unconstitutional. The agency was created after the 2008 financial crisis. Now, at issue is whether the director holds too much authority. And better late than ever, the so-called Leaning Tower of Dallas, not leaning anymore. <laughs> it took a week, but the 11-story structure near the North Central Expressway collapsed Monday. The initial explosion wasn't able to bring the building down and neither was that wrecking ball. Of course, the wrecking ball wasn't much. Opinions about the tower were mixed while some saw it as an eyesore. Others admired the building's ability to, pardon the pun, take a stand. Oh, so many people Another. disappointed. The, the leaning... wrecking ball was like this little bit. <laughs> it <was> little... <laughs> like, it's not going to hurt a wall, much of the whole building. Who thought that was okay? I, I don't know, but it's done now. 438 to 67 degrees. Coming up, more on how a couple from Dallas is still not home after being quarantined at Lackland Air Force Base with the coronavirus after their honeymoon on a Princess cruise ship. And next, after a close win against Orlando, the Spurs back in the losing column after oh. stumbling against the Pacers last night. But yeah, what happened to your friends? I don't know. We've got highlights coming up. Oh, no. I think we have low lights coming up. No. As we take a look outside, it is another warm day today. It's the storms we have to worry about, but not till later on tonight. Get out and vote if you haven't. At least the music's good. <laughs> After the mayor declared a health emergency following the release of the coronavirus patient from Lackland Air Force Base, this was the scene last night at the AT&T Center. A lot of empty seats, says the Spurs hosted the Pacers. That was before the player introductions. Plenty of, plenty of room. Something we haven't seen over the last couple of decades. Now, the game must go on. The Spurs start off strong, outscore the Pacers 10-0 to open the game, but then they fall behind late in the game. Patty Mills helped the Spurs erase that double-digit deficit. They go up by one. He led the Spurs with 24 with seven minutes left, but then the Pacers finish strong. This is the same story we've heard how many times now? Spurs get a lead. They give up the lead. The other team goes way ahead. Spurs come back, and then... They how lost 116. How was the in inbounding? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see any bad inbounding. Oh, see? see there's, something. there's something. All right. <laughs> Did it make any threes? <laughs> yeah, they made a couple of threes. See? Okay, that's something. Up next, the Spurs are on the road for a couple of games. Actually, three. They're in Charlotte tonight, back to back. That's never good. Friday, they're at Brooklyn. And then Sunday, they're at Cleveland. Okay, so to help them out, no 
Marcus Aldridge, and no Jakob Pearl. Jakob, my buddy. So, I know. So that, he needs to that, get better. That didn't help him at all. Did anybody else play it and lose that kept us in the same? Or no, the move? other teams won. So oh, no, Portland won, nice. Memphis won. So Spurs and are Memphis. like in 12 lane now. Memphis makes me so mad. 442 now and 67 degrees. Still ahead, Hollywood is remembering James Lipton, the longtime host of Inside the Actor Studio. He passed away on Monday. Did you ever watch any of the interviews? That Absolutely. He, he was a brilliant interviewer. Yeah. He had the oh, most simple good. questions that just made everybody, got to the core of the person. Loved great it. Stuff. Well, a couple from Dallas is wondering if they will ever get back home after being quarantined at Lackland. Their story coming up next. Welcome back. Your time now is 445. A newly married couple from Texas is wondering if they will ever make it home from their honeymoon because of the coronavirus. ABC's Kenneth Moten has your details in the GMA First Look. And this morning's GMA First Look, from honeymoon to quarantine. We don't know what would happen to us. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster for us. Rachel and Tyler Torres' bond has been um, tested like few newlyweds. First aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship, and now living under quarantine for 14 days at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas because of the coronavirus. We have never tested positive for coronavirus. Yeah. And I think but now their future uncertain, thing. following yeah. news that a woman was released from quarantine at the same facility before a final test for the virus came back positive. The mayor of San Antonio issued a state of emergency. We are really being held um, by the Texas government. They've put up quite a bit of roadblock for us uh, to get home. Coming up at 7 a.m., GMA has full live coverage of the coronavirus. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with what you need to know this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. These days, a stuffy nose or cough could make you a bit nervous, but is it just a cold or something more serious like the flu? There is a difference, and knowing a few symptoms can help you decide whether you need a day off to recover or should see a doctor. Ursula Perry takes a look. Flu activity has been high this season, but most cases have not been life-threatening. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that there have been 9.7 million flu illnesses. 8,700 hospitalizations and 4,800 deaths from flu so far. While the cold and the flu have similar symptoms, both are caused by different viruses. The flu is more intense. Flu symptoms can come on suddenly, and they can include fever, cough, body aches, headaches, and fatigue. It can range from mild to severe, even life-threatening. Colds generally don't result in serious health problems at all. The single best way to prevent the flu? Get a flu shot. To help stop the spread of germs, avoid contact with sick people and wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And you're supposed to wash them for 20 seconds. Most people don't do that. They just go Shh. How are your hands? How are your hands? What do you mean? How are my hands? I've been washing my hands for 20 seconds and like dried out. I got to get well, some. Well, that's why you have lotion. Moisturizer, so. I have some moisturizer in my locker if you'd like some. I had to borrow some. Okay. Let me dry. see. Oh, yeah. Ooh, he does need some moisturizer. Let's check on the roadways and see how traffic's looking. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> We have the hand police over there. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, traffic uh, moving along fairly well on the highways. We do have an accident, major accident. Motor vehicles uh, struck a uh, building there, 1,000 block of South Pine. So keep in mind, we do have a number of emergency vehicles uh, responding to that, 1,000 block of South Pine. Moving over to some other areas, 35 at Wiener so far. No issues there. A little bit of haze to uh, the camera here, 410 at... Uh, Broadway there, as you can see, but it could also be just some leftover uh, stuff on the lens as well. 410 Callahan travel in both directions, still running smoothly. And then 410 Exchange Parkway also see a little bit of haze there around some of those uh, street lights. But so far, no delays in anyone's travel time. So all in all, if you're headed out, just about to head out the door, and you're in that first wave of traffic, shouldn't be anything to slow you down out there. So enjoy your ride today because tomorrow could be a big mess. Especially for us. Yeah, the timing is moving back a little bit in the sense that we were hoping we get some of this over with before morning rush hour mm -hmm. tomorrow. But it looks like we may be still seeing a few showers, maybe a couple storms during that period, depending on how early you leave. Well, and it, if the roads are wet, it still can cause a problem anyway, even if it's not 
raining. Exactly. And we'll probably have a pretty good breeze, too. So all that together, it's, it's not going to be as nice tomorrow. That's the bottom line. I know they had that horrible tornado in Nashville. Yes. Now, this storm coming through us, can it spawn tornadoes? Is any chance of anything? It can, but I think that's on the low end. I really think if... if we see one, it'll be very isolated, and chances are we won't. Okay. So, but, but there is that possibility there. We can't say it's not there, but it's low. Uh, let's first go outside for you guys and show you what's uh, going on right now. We've got uh, some cloud cover, and as Marcus mentioned, a little bit of haze out there. So far, we haven't seen a whole lot of fog here in San Antonio, but just like yesterday, it's possible. 67 degrees, dew point is at 63. We've got calm winds. So that's, again, pretty decent setup there with all that moisture in place. Uh, for a little bit of fog. And visibility is down about a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, two and a half miles in Gonzales, a mile and a quarter in Pleasanton. So that's the corridor here where the fog is starting to kick in. If you're out west, so far we're doing okay there too. Two points are way up there. This is one of the reasons it's so sticky and uh, we're getting the, some of the lower visibilities. Uh, dew points now up to 70 in Peeville. That is in the oppressive category. That's summer like almost. And so these the dew points will stay probably in the 60s through the day. Temperatures as a result are on the warm side. We're in the upper 60s for the most part with some 50s in the hill country at this hour. Here's the setup. Some showers going on across North Texas. These aren't going to affect us. I think we could see an isolated shower or two today, but the main show is going to be tonight. And that's because this upper level low, which right now is over Mexico, is going to move right into Texas and it's going to start lifting the atmosphere, giving us uh, some thunderstorms. So here's how the future cast looks uh, by about five o'clock, I, I think we could get a couple isolated showers out there, but it is midnight where we start to see the storms erupting out west. So places like Rock Springs, Del Rio, Ufaldi, it's overnight that you'll have to watch for the potential of some stronger storms. And then by 5 a.m., Hill Country starting to see some of these storms and we'll get a broken line that'll move towards San Antonio. But notice by seven o'clock, a lot of this is starting to move out of here. So it's going to be dicey when it comes to the morning commute. Hopefully the worst of it will be east of us by then. And uh, by midday tomorrow, a lot of the rain is out of here. We may still get some clouds and some showers to the north, but I think uh, some sun certainly by the afternoon. We're, when we're talking about severe weather, the main threat is going to be up across the hill country now. This has sort of moved from what we talked about yesterday, if you remember, and that's because it looks like this low is going to track a little bit further to the north and west of San Antonio. Still, we'll have to watch for that potential of stronger storms, especially west of town. The threat's still the same. Wind and hail, your two biggest issues we may see a little bit of flooding out there too in spots, especially in the hill country, and that tornado threat is low. Rainfall wise, maybe half an inch here in San Antonio, you'll get some bigger amounts up there in the hill country where we're expecting more of the uh, storm activity. 76 by noontime, 78 by 2 o'clock, 30% chance of rain this afternoon, and uh, temperatures awful warm overnight tonight. There are your rain chances. We're going to put the highest rain chances anywhere from 3 a.m. to about 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then uh, 73 on your Wednesday, 70 Thursday, 70 Friday. We'll get some more clouds and maybe a few more showers as we get into Sunday and Monday. We don't need that hail stuff. That we don't. I hadn't enjoyed my roof from the last time I had to replace it from that last time. <laughs> I didn't have enough time to enjoy yeah, we, it yet. We, we're pretty sensitive to hail here, considering what we've seen last couple of, of uh, severe weather seasons. Let's hope it stays pretty tame tonight. Okay, here's yeah. to hoping. Time now. Oh, go ahead. You got it. Okay, 453, 67 degrees. Very good. Still ahead, music artist Taylor Swift celebrating after a major milestone. Will she make another $100 million or something? Probably. She's talented. Welcome back, 456. Singer Taylor Swift once again seeing tremendous success after a record setting year in 2019. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Romina Puga. Bradley Cooper. James Lipton, the longtime host of Inside the Actors Studio, passed away on Monday of bladder cancer, his wife told the New York Times and The Hollywood Reporter. He was 93 years old. For nearly 25 years, Lipton interviewed hundreds of actors on his show. He also served as dean at the Actors Studio. A memoir by writer-director Woody Allen is set to come out April 7th, despite his Me Too press. Grand Central Publishing announced the book is titled Apropos of Nothing and is a comprehensive account of his life and work in film, theater, TV, nightclubs and print. The 84-year-old was accused by his daughter Dylan Farrow of allegedly molesting her as a child, idling his movie career in the U.S. and with Amazon Studios backing out of a production and distribution deal with Allen. 
and Taylor Swift was named the world's best-selling artist of 2019. Her seventh studio album, Lover, which came out in August, chalked up three million sales worldwide within a week. Right now I'm and happy birthday to Camila Cabello, who is 23 today, and Jessica Biel, who turned 38. That's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Romina Puga for ABC News in Los Angeles. 457, 67 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, concerns over the coronavirus now affecting the court system at the Cadena Reeves Justice Center. A one county court judge is making some changes. Plus, Apple paying millions to owners of old iPhones to settle a lawsuit over device slowdowns. We'll have the details coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines overnight, at least four armed men invade a home and demand money at gunpoint. We've got the latest. Voters head to the polls this Super Tuesday as candidates wait to see what America decides about its future. And taking a live look outside with live cam, a little foggy looks like. And it's humid and it's warm and things are going to change. Justin Horn's got your forecast coming up. Good morning. It is Super Tuesday, March 3rd. Yeah, thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. If you didn't vote, vote early, today's your day. So make sure you put that in your schedule. And weather will cooperate, yeah. we believe. We hope, yeah. At least through the voting time, right, Justin? Yeah, it should be good. We're, we're not too worried about storms really today. It's tonight, early tomorrow morning. That's the time frame that we're going to have to watch for a couple of strong storms, some lightning, some thunder, maybe some hail, some gusty winds out there. But we, we'll keep you posted through the day and into tonight. Don't worry about that. As far as temperatures go right now, 66 degrees at the airport, 65 Hondo, 61 Pleasanton. We have a little bit of haze, a little bit of fog out there to deal with right now. Visibilities are down in a few spots, but we're going to be up near 80 today. So an awful warm day. There is a 30% chance for a couple showers this afternoon. But again, the main show holds off until tonight. As far as visibility goes, we're continually seeing these numbers drop. So fog is really starting to kick in across our eastern counties. Places like Gonzales, Pleasanton, you're down about... Uh, well, quarter of a mile there in Pleasanton. Same story in New Braunfels. And the number here in San Antonio is starting to come down a little bit too. So we'll have to watch for some fog in the next couple of hours. Forecast for today. Again, if you plan on voting, no big issues. Uh, there is a 30% chance for showers we get into the afternoon. Temperatures, uh, 70s until we get up to about 80 this afternoon. And then uh, with the storms moving in tonight, we'll see some cooler temperatures tomorrow and some cooler mornings down the line, too. We're going to talk all about the potential for severe weather, where we think the best chance will be. It's coming up here in just a few minutes, but let's get over to Marcus. So far, the fog's not bad, so not a whole lot of issues out there, right, Marcus? That's right. As far as your highways are concerned, there uh, should be no issues out there. Just watch that speed limit once you do head out. Now, taking a look at uh, the map, though, we do have this accident. It is a motor vehicle uh, house uh, accident, but uh, from what we understand, no one was occupying the house at the time. That's uh, Pine right there, the 1,000 block of South Pine. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding there to that accident. Now, 21 at 410 up there by the airport. You can see the connector ramps look pretty good down below. Hardly any traffic out right now. Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating after they say at least four armed suspects kicked their way into a home on the west side. It happened just after 1 a.m. in the 5400 block of Winchep Farm. Police received the call about a home invasion. They say the suspects were armed when they broke in and put their guns in the face of the victims and demanded money. SAPD says the suspects fired two shots inside the house before getting away with cell phones and a purse. The victims told police they did not know the suspects. We'll have more in a live report in our next half hour. As coronavirus concerns continue to swirl this morning, a judge has denied the city's attempt at a temporary restraining order aimed at the federal government to extend the quarantine period at JBSA Lackland. But a public health emergency declaration remains in place. Meanwhile, coronavirus concerns also having an impact on the court system at the Kadena Reeves Justice Center. A county court judge canceled her morning docket and is resetting cases at what she called an abundance of caution. Paul Vedema takes a look at how the court will operate with those changes. On any given Monday morning, normally the busiest day here in County Court Number 9, the courtroom would be packed with lawyers, defendants, and their families. Not today. I'm restructuring my docket so that I don't have more than 15 people in court at, at one time. Judge Saldana told me she's concerned about the spread of the coronavirus. I want to 
make my courtroom safe in light of everything that's going on. She plans to have her docket rescheduling in place within a day or two. I am a proactive person. I like, I was a Girl Scout. I like to be prepared. The misdemeanor court administrative judge validates what Judge Saldana is doing. I think it's a very good idea. Judge John Longoria said he also worries about the number of people who show up for jury duty every day. Our jury room gets about five to six hundred people uh, a day and that could spread like wildfire if it gets here. So why not try to monitor right at the entrance? He's talking about screening everyone at the courthouse entrances. We check for people coming in with weapons. Uh, why not check for people coming in with a fever? Whether other courts decide to follow Judge Saldana's lead is up to the individual judges. Each judge has a choice on how to run their courtroom. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. It is Super Tuesday, and Texans will be heading to the polls to cast their vote today. The polls open at 7 o'clock this morning and stay open until 7 o'clock tonight. The Lone Star State holds 228 delegates. If you live in Bear County or many other counties across South Texas, you can vote at any polling location. Just be sure to bring a state-issued ID to see all the polling locations near your work, home, or school. And to follow the latest election news, just head over to KSAD.com's Vote 2020 page. Nationwide, voters in 14 states and the territory of American Samoa will head to the polls today. About a third all pledged delegates are up for grabs. Former Senator Amy Klobuchar, Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Tom Steyer all left the race. Seven Democratic presidential candidates appeared in the last debate before today's election. And of those now, just four remain. Former Vice President Joe Biden, former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg, Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Both Klobuchar and Buttigieg are uniting behind Joe Biden's presidential bid. California remains the largest hall of the Super Tuesday delegates, awarding 416 pledged delegates. Texas, though, has a close second. Both states combined would give an influence over the Democratic Party's choice for presidential contender. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has stopped tallying the people tested for coronavirus. That halts a process of reporting the CDC has started since January. CDC says states are testing and reporting their own results and that the CDC's info may not be accurate. When the outbreak started, the CDC was the only lab in the U.S. that was able to test for the coronavirus. But over the weekend, the FDA allowed other labs to do high complexity testing. Five Chinese state media outlets will have to cut the number of employees in the United States. A senior State Department official says the head count will have to come down from about 160 to 100. Last month, the State Department designated the state media outlets as extensions of the Chinese government, which means they will have to comply with the rules that govern foreign missions in the United States, and that includes staffing. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says that the hope is that China will start treating foreign press in a more fair way. It's 508, 66 degrees. Still ahead, more on how iPhone is paying up millions of dollars to old iPhone users who experience slowdowns. And also coming up next, Wednesday's Wendy's has officially entered the breakfast war. We'll tell you about some of their new menu items coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. Don't forget to vote today, everybody. It's Super Tuesday. In your morning consumer headlines, another mode of transportation has joined the airlines in making policy changes to deal with the coronavirus outbreak. Amtrak announced on its website it's now waiving change fees on travel reservations. They point to customers concerned about the virus. In the notice, the railroad service says it's not facing any current travel restrictions because of the outbreak. For now, the waiver applies to tickets purchased by April 30th. Amtrak says it will, quote, continue to monitor the coronavirus situation closely and adjust the policy as necessary. Wendy's has officially entered the breakfast competition. There are three new sandwiches served on croissants, biscuits, Ooh. and classic buns with eggs and meat. The full menu consists of nine sandwiches, including a morning edition of its famed Baconator. It's also debuting a maple bacon chicken croissant and a honey butter chicken biscuit. Ooh, that's all sound good. New side dishes include potato wedges and sausage gravy. There's a new blend of coffee and an iced frosty chino. The Baconator sounds... The Baconator sounds pretty Like good. it put about 7,000 pounds on you. Yeah. But, yeah. You have to work out a little more. Harder. 512, 66. <laughs> Still ahead, Disney's long-awaited adventure based on the best-selling novels about a young Irish criminal mastermind is about to debut. And a major company is withdrawing from the 
South by Southwest Conference because of coronavirus concerns. We've got that coming up. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. Apple will pay a hefty fine after admitting to slowing down older phones. ABC's Ken Smoten and Shireen Shah have the details of today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Apple is set to pay a heavy price for slowing down old phones. The company has agreed to shell out a half billion dollars in a settlement for throttling iPhone 6s and 7s. Apple admitted it slowed down the phones, but claims they did it to save the phone's batteries. And could this month's South by Southwest conference fall victim to the coronavirus? Facebook has joined Twitter in announcing they're not sending anyone to the big tech and culture event in Austin, Texas. Tens of thousands have signed an online petition calling for it to be canceled. And if you believe everyone needs friends, the latest version of the Monopoly game is for you. It just went on sale exclusively on Amazon and it's already number one in the toys and games category. Everyone loves friends. And I want my little game piece to represent Chandler Bing because he's awesome. <laughs> he is awesome. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. People in Harlandale ISD are getting a boost to start reading. The final little library in the district has been installed in the Sosa Parent Education Center. Little Libraries is an initiative that encourages people to donate, borrow, and share books with others in the community. The director for the Sosa Parent Education Center says the center is the perfect place for the library because it serves as a hub for the Harlandale District. We have uh, ESL classes, we have parenting classes, uh, we have nutrition classes, we have our food bank here, we have our clothing closet here. It's just the main hub for the Harlandale community, and so people are coming in and out all day long. Wolf says one of the district's biggest pushes is literacy. She hopes the little library will improve children's literacy by encouraging reading among both parents and kids. It's awesome. It's nice to see we're moving back to books. Like, so, yeah. Instead of computers and phones. And, and I have friends who are really big readers, yeah. and they have to have a book in their hand. It's, good. it's really important to them to have a book. Every child should have a book in their hand. That's good. I, I agree. And two hands on the steering wheel. Let's check in with the expert on that one. That's four hands. The uh, alien kids? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadway, I'm sorry, I had just had to ask that. As we take a look at the roadway, it says highways still look pretty good and still clearing that major axe on the 1000 block of South Pine. But uh, right now, that's the only issue uh, that we're seeing out there. Let's take a look at Transguide. 410 up there by the airport. 281 and 410, those connector ramps still looking pretty good. No problems there. 410 at Exchange Parkway. Uh, down the street there, 410 at Everett so far, no issues. And then uh, we wrap it up there on that side of town with 410 at Callahan. Now look at 37 at Goliad down there on the southeast side. North and south on lanes running smoothly right now all the way through 37 in Carolina. And then I-10 and Callahan traveling both directions, still running smoothly. A little bit of haze there, uh, just a little bit around those street lights. But nothing on the roadways just yet. So, so far, things remain dry, calm on the roadways, but like not going to be that case overnight. Yeah, it sounds like a, it's quite the storm system coming our way. Yeah, I, I think it is going to produce some stronger storms, probably pre-dawn tomorrow. So that's the time frame we're looking at. So yes, tomorrow's commute, mm. a little more busy for you. Uh, we've had some issues across the country too this morning, uh, or at least overnight. I, some of the news coming out of Nashville is not so good. It's really, really yeah. awful. Yeah, they had a tornado go right through downtown. We, we've got 
some video of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll show you a little bit later, but uh, it looks like it, it, it has done some pretty good damage there too. And at least two people dead is what I understand. Uh, that's that's what we're hearing and uh, a lot of damage there, a lot of power lines down, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at some of the storm reports that are coming out of Kentucky this morning in Tennessee. And there's quite a few of them. So a storm system uh, that was off to our north and east, that's what was behind this. And we'll zoom in a little bit closer and uh, you can see some of the reports now. That one in Nashville isn't showing up yet, but uh, it, it, it did occur, and uh, we've got pretty much ground truth there to prove that. Otherwise, several other tornadoes have uh, popped up overnight, or at least caused some damage, wind damage, hail damage, you name it. So it was severe weather. It was, it was busy overnight off to our north and east. Those storms are moving away from Nashville, so good news for those folks. But uh, let's take you down to Texas here and show you what we have to look forward to because we could see a little bit of severe weather of our own. There is an upper level low spinning right here, and this is a storm system that will be moving into Texas. Now, the latest models have moved this just a little bit in the sense that the severe weather has maybe shifted a little bit more to our north and west, so maybe more hill country and off to our north and west, but I still think we'll have a shot at some stronger storms here in San Antonio. Right now, 66 degrees. It's warm. It's humid. Dew point is at 62. With calm winds, humidity is at 87%. You'll find 60s across the map here. And as we zoom out some, uh, 60s for the most part with some 50s in the hill country and a few 70s down to the south. Visibility is becoming an issue, especially in New Braunfels, places like Gonzales, Pleasanton. You're seeing the fog this morning. And as you get closer to the coast, it actually thickens up a little bit. We may see some of that here in San Antonio. It's been a little bit hazy last hour or so. Future cash shows uh, isolated showers. This afternoon, about a 30% chance of rain, but our rain chances really increase overnight. So this is midnight. We'll get the storms developing out west. Could see some strong to severe storms when they do develop. And then we'll get a broken line moving towards San Antonio. This is around 5 o'clock. You can see the activity here moving a little bit closer to town. And then by 7 o'clock, a lot of it's starting to move east and northeast. And then by midday, we're probably clearing out a little bit. But uh, we still could see a couple showers off to the north. And the severe weather threat, as I mentioned, shifting a little bit to the north and west. So it is the hill country that will be under the gun. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, Hondo. San Antonio is still in the marginal risk. And even uh, northwestern Bear County is still in the slight risk. I still think we have a shot at some stronger storms. The main threat with these storms is going to be the wind and the hail. Uh, there could be some flooding. Uh, and tornado threat is low here with this uh, line of storms that will be coming through. Rainfall potential, I'd say half an inch up to an inch as you get up into the hill country. That's where we'll probably see the bigger numbers, lower numbers down to the south of San Antonio rainfall wise. But any rainfall we get will be helpful as we're still sort of in a drought situation here. Uh, temperature wise up to 80 degrees today, just a 30% chance of showers during the afternoon tonight. Overnight is when those rain chances kick in. Best chance will be between 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And the extended forecast 73 tomorrow, 70 on Thursday, 70 Friday. Some good days there Thursday and Friday. Saturday looks good too, but more clouds by Sunday. Maybe some rain chances early next week. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. It is 523, 66 degrees. The newest film for actor Harrison Ford isn't doing so hot at the box office. We'll tell you why Call of the Wild is losing money. Welcome back, 525. Today in entertainment news, we've got a movie that's not making enough money and a film based on a popular book series. Plus a filmmaker who's writing a book of his own. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. I promised you, didn't I? And here we are. The Call of the Wild has fared decently at the box office so far, but all that CGI, including the dog, doesn't come cheap. According to Variety, the film from Disney-owned 20th Century Studios cost more than $125 million to produce, and it's expected to lose around $50 million. It's real. Save my father, save the world. Here's your latest look at Artemis Fowl, Disney's long-awaited adventure based on the best-selling novels about a young Irish criminal mastermind. The movie, originally slated for last August, is now scheduled to hit theaters May 29th. Woody Allen's not having much luck getting movies released in the U.S. How about a book? Grand Central Publishing is set to release the controversial filmmaker's autobiography titled Apropos of Nothing. The publisher says the memoir will feature, quote, a comprehensive account of his life, both personal and professional. It's due in stores April 7th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Wake up. Scott told you, I was, can't believe a movie lost $50 million. It's for, that's like the time. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money to lose on a movie. 527, 66 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour on the Super Tuesday, we take a closer look at what's at stake for the candidates moving forward. Plus, the stock market rebounding after one of the biggest gains in history of the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And upcoming, an upcoming book festival showcasing why books are still important for child growth and how you can encourage your children to read more. Your alarm goes off at 5.30. It's probably going off right now. Yes. Uh, We're glad you're with us and waking up with us on this very special Tuesday. Super Tuesday! Some people are waking up today going, ah. Oh. Really? I think, you know, that's part of the battle, waking up. So <laughs> that's, it's, it's a good Stop. start to a day, right? Here's Tuesdays Tuesday. are always the worst to me. Is it really? I don't know what it is about Tuesday. Well, you, you, what you just said, if your alarm's set for 5.30, I'm thinking, ah, to sleep into 5.30. Yeah. That right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. How are the roads looking this morning? So far, looking pretty good. We have that one accident that's uh, not on the highway. A motor vehicle uh, struck a uh, house there, 1,000 block of uh -oh. South Pine. No injuries that we know of, uh, but uh, as far as the highways, so far, no issues. To the east of us, boy, they had some bad weather. Yeah, some bad storms overnight in parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. The, the video and pictures coming out of Nashville, it just doesn't look good. They had a tornado there in downtown Nashville. It does look like it did quite a bit of damage. Uh, here, we're also looking for the potential of a few storms overnight. I don't think they'll be quite to that level, but we'll have to watch for a few strong storms. I want to show you a picture, though, real quick. Let's talk happy stuff here. Uh, this is a beautiful shot uh, sent in by uh, Yvonne, who is a superstar in our KSAT Connect. See the bee there. Uh, it's about that time of year. These flowers are blooming. We got the bees out, the mosquitoes. I saw a few of those yesterday. We're dealing with that as well. Temperature 66 degrees at the airport, 63 Bernie State, 61 Canyon Lake, 65 at Hondo. Cloudy skies out there, a lot of humidity. That's setting the stage for what we could see tonight. Uh, as far as visibility goes, uh, there is some fog. New Braunfels, Gonzales down to Victoria, Beeville. San Antonio still doing okay at the moment. We didn't see a whole lot of fog yesterday. I'm not anticipating a whole lot this morning, but we could see this number come down just a little bit in the coming hours. So Super Tuesday forecast, if you're going out to vote today, looks good. We'll have cloudy skies. There is an outside chance for showers. We'll get later into today, and temperatures will be awful warm. 80 degrees, your high temperature. The easterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk storms tonight. We're going to have the latest on that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But uh, let's talk about traffic now with Officer Marcus Trio. And as we take a look at the map, Justin, we can see that uh, no issues on the highways. Traffic moving along fairly well on this Tuesday morning. Right now, uh, things look pretty good. Later on uh, throughout the day and then later on, watch out for a number of pedestrians that could be around these polling places. They're not going to be, they're going to be preoccupied, not going to be paying attention to traffic. So you will need to pay attention and reduce that speed around those areas just as a precaution. Now 37 looks pretty good here from Jones all the way down to 37 to Goliad on the southeast side. Looking at 35 and 410 on the northeast side. So far, no problems there. Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. Well, people on the west side home woke up to a nightmare, masked men pointing guns at their faces. Police are still looking for those gunmen who also fired shots at the home. It happened in the neighborhood near Culebra and Callahan. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. So do police have any leads on those gunmen, Katrina? Well, it sounds like they've found one piece of evidence, a big piece of evidence, in fact, the possible getaway car, but those gunmen still on the run. Now, the people who live in that west side home, which is on a street called Windsheep Farm, told San Antonio police that there were four men in all wearing masks and holding guns. They kicked in the door around one o'clock this morning, pointed their guns at the people inside and demanded cash. The residents told police those robbers fired two shots at their home before running off with their cell phones and a purse. Police did search the area, but they did not find the gunman again. Uh, they say they were able to get a signal from one of the cell phones, and it led them to a car which was parked a few miles away, the possible getaway car. And it's a pretty safe bet that police will be going through that looking for clues. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Hey, Katrina, you might want to avoid North Star Mall today. The mall will be closed for deep cleaning after officials were notified that an evacuee who tested positive for coronavirus had visited the shopping center on Saturday. Officials say the woman checked into a hotel near the San Antonio International Airport and spent about two hours at the mall. The announcement was posted around 2.45 yesterday afternoon. Officials said the mall would be closed for about 24 hours. 
San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help to find two suspects involved in an assault at a local bar. Police say on February 9th, a man and a woman got into a fight with a victim at the Moses Roses Hideout Bar. That's on East Houston. During the fight, police say a woman pulled out a box cutter, cut the victim, but then ran away. If you know anything about this assault, call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. Crime Stoppers will give a reward of up to $5,000 if information leads to an arrest. It is Super Tuesday, and politically speaking, it's living up to its billing. Voters in 13 other states will elect delegates from the Democratic primary. Texas has 228 delegates up for grabs today, which is dwarfed only by California's 416. North Carolina is the third largest state today with 110 delegates. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, all this could determine a clear leader for the Democratic presidential nomination. It's the most important day of the 2020 presidential campaign thus far. On Super Tuesday, contests are held in 14 states and American Samoa. Joe Biden heads into the day coming off a big weekend win in South Carolina. Get up! Let's take back this country. We're the United States of America, and there's not a single thing we cannot do if we do it together. On Monday, the former vice president got endorsements from former candidates Pete Buttigieg, Beto O'Rourke, and Amy Klobuchar. I cannot think of a better way to end my campaign than joining his. Senator Elizabeth Warren spent Monday in the delegate-rich state of California. This is about both beating Donald Trump and about delivering real change in January 2021. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg says being president requires a manager and executive. I can beat Donald Trump. And I don't know that any of the other Democratic candidates can. And two, that I am ready for the job, and I don't think any of the others are. As for the current front runner, it looks like St. Paul is ready for a political revolution. We are running the strongest grassroots campaign any candidate has run in the modern history of America. Senator Bernie Sanders starts Super Tuesday with more delegates than Biden. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. This year will be the first in Texas in which straight ticket voting will not be allowed in the general election. That's never an option in primaries, but the vote totals could give a hint of the change's effect. The straight ticket voting question will also inform Democrats' questions about how important the name is at the top of the ticket. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a list of five things to watch on this Super Tuesday in Texas. And be sure to join us later today as we monitor the election results. Steve Spreester will hold a Spreester session starting right at 7 o'clock as the polls close. He'll have live results as they come in, as well as local analysis. The night beat will also be an hour long tonight for more election coverage. If you will not be up late, you can always join us tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio for the results and reactions from Super Tuesday. Well, stocks will begin today on a good note after a great finish yesterday. That's after days of downturns, mostly because of how the coronavirus is affecting certain businesses and the economy. The Dow did rebound with gains of more than 1,200 points, the biggest point gain in history. All three indices boosted 4 to 5 percent higher finishes. One of the country's best-known political talk show hosts is retiring from MSNBC. Chris Matthews made the announcement on Monday night's Hardball a show he's hosted for more than 20 years. Two people close to the situation said the 74-year-old had been expected to retire after the 2020 election cycle, but one person says Matthews moved up retirement after a string of recent controversies. He apologized for comments he's made about women. Also in his farewell, Matthews said the younger generation is ready to take the reins. MSNBC did not immediately name a replacement. It's 538. It's 66 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to take a closer look at the impact coronavirus is having on travel. Digital devices can be great learning tools for children, but a local book advocate says a book can help a child so much more. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, how you can get your child to reach for a book instead of an iPad. Live cam giving us a look outside. Looks a little hazy in that picture. We've got the potential for some storms overnight. We'll check in with Justin for your forecast and Marcus is tracking traffic.
Welcome back. It is 541. iPads, iPhones, or streaming devices dominate our lives and children as well. But local book advocates say a child reaching for a book over a digital device can help them grow and develop so much more. Sarah Costa spoke to one of the organizers with the upcoming book festival about why books are so important for child growth and how you can encourage your children to read more. You know, a book gives a kid um, the chance to develop their own imagination. Clay Smith is the literary director of the upcoming 8th Annual San Antonio Book Festival. He says a child reading a book instead of using a digital device can help them grow so much more. Smith says a good writer will always leave room for imagination and take children on journeys to different places that can get them sucked into the plot of the book. The plot is really, um, you know, makes you want to turn the pages. That does so much for a child and it teaches them, I would say, self-confidence and self-reliance because they're just sitting there kind of alone with the book. Living in a time where children are conditioned to reach for an iPad or an iPhone, how can parents help their children break that habit and have them reach for a book instead? Smith says if your child is competitive, set challenges for them through reading. Ask your kid if they can read 100 books over the summer or 10 over the Christmas break or 5 over spring break. Make it a sort of competition. He also says let them read what interests them and not set the bar too high. Because a kid who is drawn in even by a really simple story will read more and then that kid is more likely to become a reader as an adult. But most importantly, be a good example. Catch the great white whale and I'll give you the gold. Be a reader yourself. Set an example. You know, show, let your kids see you reading. Smith says you can get your children excited about reading with the many children's activities at the upcoming free book festival on April 4th. Some of the events include children's writers bringing their books to life through performances every half hour, crafts like making bookmarks and marbled paper, and meeting authors. He says he hopes the festival can inspire children to become lifetime readers. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The festival on April 4th is free. It'll be held at the Central Library downtown at 600 Soledad and at the Southwest School of Art from 9 a.m. To 5 p.m. You can find some more information about the festival on KSAT.com. Your time now is 544 and 66 degrees. Coming up next, some experts say the coronavirus scare could be the worst crisis for the travel industry since the September 11 attacks. We'll take a closer look. As the coronavirus continues to spread around the world, the impact on travel is growing by the day. The travel industry is already taking a major financial hit, but experts say the worst may be ahead. In today's Consumer Watch, a closer look at the impact on the global economy. Travel restrictions, canceled trips, and soaring fears of a pandemic. The coronavirus scare could be the worst crisis for the travel industry since the September 11th attacks. Experts say the industry is already taking a huge hit, and it's just the beginning. A Kaiser Family Foundation survey found one in eight people have already changed their travel plans due to virus concerns. There's also been a sharp drop in travel across the Pacific, not just to and from China, but also to other Asian countries. That drop is seen in both leisure and business business travel. Several major conferences are canceled, including Facebook's F8 conference, the Geneva Motor Show, and ironically, the ITB Berlin, the leading trade show for the travel industry itself. And experts say millions of workers could lose their jobs or have their hours cut if demand continues to dwindle. The coronavirus scare is also affecting how some companies are doing business, with some of them discouraging non-essential travel for employees. A survey of 400 businesses by the Global Business Travel Association found nearly half of the businesses have canceled or postponed at least some meetings or travel. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Do you have something to say? It looks like you're thinking really hard about yeah, wanting to say something, right. but you just can't decide what to say. Uh, never mind. 548. 68. All right, we just do that. Time and temp. Oh, let's do that. And why don't we check on traffic, too? Let's do that, too. Okay. Marcus, what's happening? <clears throat> right now, as we take a look at the map there, you can see uh, everything moving uh, fairly well. So, uh, not too much as far as uh, the way that, uh, as far as things, it'll slow you down out there. Uh, traffic moving along at a decent pace in uh, most areas. Right now, as we take a look at TransGuide through various TransGuide cameras here in the downtown vicinity, 35 at Brooklyn, North and South Island Lanes, looking pretty good there. Also 35 at Alamo 
As we scroll along to some other areas, you can see I-10 and Callahan. So far, no congestion for those two lanes exiting for 410 in the eastbound or westbound lanes and I-10 and Frio right there at the 35 north and south split. So far, no congestion. 410 Cherry Ridge looking pretty good. And no delays right now in anyone's travel times. There's I-10, 1604. Not bad for 10 minutes before 6 in the morning. Pretty good. You were stunned that I had nothing to say, weren't you? It was a little shocking. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. <laughs> you have no. a, we have Did a soapbox and an animation dedicated just to you because you have so much to say. Just just wait until 9 o'clock this morning. Oh, Yo. the Spurs lost. It's, we're going to have the soapbox yeah. ready to go. It's tough being <laughs> Dave. Sometimes it is. Mm. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on this one, though. Yeah, yeah see? Yeah, uh -huh. It's yeah. a little scary. Yeah. But, uh, I'm worried about these storms tonight. Yeah, uh, we're going to get some storms. I don't know if there's a whole lot to be worried about here in San Antonio, but we're going to have to watch the radar pretty closely because there could be some stronger storms. Hail and wind are going to be the main threats. And not everybody will get that, but uh, some of these storms could produce uh, that kind of weather. Uh, let's uh, take a look outside right now. We've got a little bit of hazy sky out there as we look out. Uh, towards the airport here in San Antonio. Right now, temperatures at 66 at the airport. Port SA is at 64. We're down to 61, though. It's Denson and Randolph. Winds are generally pretty calm out there. And the visibility still lower around New Braunfels and Gonzales. Victoria seeing some lower visibility there. Also, Beeville. We've seen the numbers come down a little bit here in San Antonio, too. But so far, it's not causing a lot of problems. Temperature-wise, Pretty warm, 66 again here in town, 68 Gonzales. You'll find some 50s in the hill country, and there is some cooler air as you work north frontal boundary up there. Probably is not going to make it down to San Antonio, uh, but uh, you will find some cooler numbers as you work north of our area. Forecast for today, we're thinking up close to 80 for a high. That's plenty warm considering we're not going to see a whole lot of sun. There is a 30% chance of some showers as we get into the afternoon, but if you plan on voting today, there should not be a lot of issues weather-wise. It's not until tonight that we're expecting uh, the more significant weather. There is a tornado watch box in effect there across parts of Alabama. More severe weather there. Of course, we've been talking about the severe weather that went on last night in parts of Nashville, Kentucky, Tennessee, and that we've got a new system taking shape out here. Uh, just south of Arizona now, the, the water vapor shows that this storm system is actually strengthening some, and you can see all the moisture in the upper levels that are streaming over top of Texas. So uh, this is a good setup for us, and that's why Computer models are showing us that, yes, we will get some storms overnight. This is at 5 o'clock today, just some isolated stuff, but watch what happens at midnight. We see the storms just blow up here. Uh, Junction, Rocks, Brainsview Valley, places where we could see some of these storms. Again, a few of those could be on the strong side, and they'll probably form into a line, work their way east. This is at 5 a.m. I'd say here in San Antonio, we're moving back the timing just a little bit. So maybe 5 to 6 a.m., we're talking about storms moving into town here. Uh, when we're with you tomorrow morning, we'll probably be talking about this. And then by 7 o'clock, a lot of this is starting to move northeast. We'll still get some showers north of our area tomorrow. Most of that will probably stay to the north, though. Severe weather risk. This has shifted north and west. So it's a hill country that's probably under the gun overnight and early tomorrow morning. But even here in San Antonio, we still could see a little bit of uh, some severe weather. Wind and hail, the main threats. Flooding is a risk, too, but it's a little bit lower, and the tornado risk is low. Rainfall-wise, half an inch, up to a half an inch here in San Antonio. We'll see some higher amounts up there around Kerrville, Fredericksburg, in the hill country where some of those stronger storms will be. Overnight tonight, we'll uh, look for the rain chances to pick up. Again, 3 to 7 a.m. I'd say that's the window here in San Antonio where we'll have our best rain chances. Again, that's tomorrow morning. 73 on Wednesday, 70 Thursday, 70 Friday. And we'll get some clouds over the weekend with more rain chances by Monday. And yes, we do spring forward this nope. weekend. I think if I say no enough, it's going to change. <laughs> You're really, uh, you know, disturbed by this. I'm very opposed to it. Yeah. Most people who work this shift are. I, I, I am too, actually. Are you going to be late Monday? Maybe. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. 553, 66 You're not even degrees. here because you're off Monday. You get to sleep in as late as you want. That's timing. Yeah, they what that else? Deal. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers as we head to break. Your pick three numbers are 798 with a fireball of four. And your daily four numbers are 6777 with a fireball of zero. And you cash five is 3, 11, 19, 26, 31. Texas two step, 9, 14, 17, 27. Bonus ball is three. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the coronavirus outbreak as the death toll rises in Washington state. 
the Trump administration announcing new airport screenings. One of the members of the Coronavirus Task Force joining us live. Plus, I'll have the latest on the tornado outbreak in the Mid-South. It's all coming up only on GMA. See you soon. It is 5.57 in San Antonio Spurs are back in action on the road tonight in Charlotte after they lost here at home to the Indiana Pacers. The Spurs started off strong as usual. They outscored the Pacers 10-0 to open up the game, but then later on they fell behind. Patty Mills was able to help temporarily erase that Spurs double-digit deficit, but the Pacers finished strong down the stretch and they ended up winning 116 to 111. So as we mentioned, the Spurs are out on the road in Charlotte tonight at 6 o'clock. Then Friday, they're at Brooklyn at 6.30. And then Sunday, they are in Cleveland. Take on the Cavs. That one also tips off at 6.30. Hey, still coming up for the next hour, we've got the latest on Super Tuesday, as well as more on fighting on a frightening home invasion that happened on the city's west side. And as we go to break, we'll take a look at Trans Guide. Where's Trans Guide? Trans Guide's up there. There's Trans Guide right there. Roads are pretty clear today so far. Looking good. Marcus Trujillo has got an update for you on that. And Dustin Horn's got your weather update. Coming up. Police searching for at least four people who broke into a house and pointed guns at the people inside. North Star Mall closed today while health officials disinfect it to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. We'll hear what local officials are saying about the latest developments in San Antonio. And a live look outside with live cam. Kind of foggy this morning, a little warm already. Going to get warmer today. Chance of some rain and some storms. And then overnight, things will get really interesting. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Tuesday, March 3rd. It is Election Day. So make sure you get out and vote if you did not vote early. We have all the election stuff you need to know about coming up in just a moment. But right now, what you need to be aware of, weather. Not today, but tonight. Yeah, it looks like it's going to get very interesting overnight tonight. Though. Yeah, we, we can see some strong storms. I know you guys have been busy in the newsroom with everything that's been going on. We're going to get busy in the weather center, I right. think, as we get to later into tonight, early tomorrow morning. The time frame, I think, is going to be just before rush hour tomorrow. That's where we'll be watching for some storms moving into San Antonio area. Radar right now doesn't show a whole lot. We've got some showers well off to our north and west. And if we see anything today, probably it'll stay on the light side. Uh, temperatures plenty warm, though. 65 degrees at the airport right now. 61 Bandera, 60 at Canyon Lake, 62 New Braunfels. Cloudy skies. There is a little bit of fog in spots. We're seeing visibility down to a quarter of a mile now in New Braunfels. So uh, that's probably one of the problem spots right now. New, Bra New Braunfels, Gonzales, Victoria, down to Beeville. Even Pleasanton showing a little bit of fog in Uvalde starting to show some lowered visibility there as well. Forecast for Super Tuesday, cloudy skies through noontime, stays plenty warm. Uh, we could get up uh, near 80 today, especially if we see a few peaks of sun. About a 30% chance of rain, but then the storms scheduled to move in tonight. We're going to talk more about the timing, what we can expect. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, but let's talk with Marcus this morning, see what's going on on those roadways. Looks like uh, we're Doing OK, maybe so far we're doing pretty good on the roadways and the highways. You can see no issues out there, Justin. Everybody moving at least at the speed limit. And that's what you want to watch this morning. Once you head out, roads are dry. However, it's really easy for let that speed get ahead of you or get away from you rather as you're out there on the highways with this open road. So just keep that in mind. Uh, be cognizant of what's going on. Put away those distractions, those cell phones, those coffee cups and both hands on the wheel. As you can see, I-10 to Calhan still looking great with no delays there. And moving on to I-10 and Frio closer to the downtown area, 35 north and south split so far. No delays, no congestions and 410 to Callahan or 410 to Cherry Ridge rather. Everything's smooth sailing right now. David and Leslie. Thank you, Officer Trujillo. New this morning, terrifying moments for some people on the west side. They woke up to men pointing guns at their faces. Right now, police still looking for those suspects. It happened around 1 this morning in a neighborhood near Calabria and Callahan. The people in the home told San Antonio police there were four men wearing masks and holding guns. They say they kicked in the door, pointed the guns at them, and then demanded cash. They also fired two shots at the home before running off with their cell phones and a purse. Officers said they may have found the getaway car, but no sign of the suspects. Coming up in the next half hour, Katrina Weber will have more on this story in a live report. Well, also overnight, a man is facing charges after leading deputies on a high-speed chase. At one point, it reached speeds of more than 100 miles per hour. The chase started just before midnight, or just after midnight, rather, at Acme and Groudon. 
Bear County deputies were initially called out to a family violence call. That's when the suspect got away in a black truck and sped away. He eventually crashed into a fence near Kelly Air Force Base. We're told he tried to make a run for it by jumping 15 feet down onto Highway 151, but he was caught and arrested. The suspect was taken to the hospital because of the injuries from the fall. A man in the hospital this morning after a driver hit him with her car. Police say it happened just after midnight at West Commerce in San Saba. They say the man ran across the street and a woman coming home from work hit him. Police say no charges are being filed against the woman at this time. North Star Mall will remain closed for most of the day after a person infected with the coronavirus visited the mall on Saturday. The mall closed yesterday afternoon, which was the same day Mayor Ron Nirenberg declared a state of emergency. The mayor and other local leaders also tried to file a temporary restraining order against the federal government to prevent 122 quarantined evacuees at JBSA Lackman from being released. The judge denied the attempt. Despite the attempts to keep quarantine patients on lockdown, the mayor says the public should not panic. We have the situation currently under control, and we want to make sure that people are aware that our standard here is to make sure that people in the public are at no, no additional risk for exposure to COVID-19. Metro health officials say the mall will be cleaned and all surfaces, including doors, countertops, and anything in the food court area, plus tech services, will be disinfected. Concerns over the coronavirus also having an impact on the court system at the Kadena Reeves Justice Center. A county court judge canceled her morning docket and is resetting cases out of what she called an abundance of caution. Paul Vedema has a look at how the court will operate with those changes. On any given Monday morning, normally the busiest day here in County Court Number 9, the courtroom would be packed with lawyers, defendants, and their families. Not today. I'm restructuring my docket so that I don't have more than 15 people in court at, at one time. Judge Saldana told me she's concerned about the spread of the coronavirus. I want to make my courtroom safe in light of everything that's going on. She plans to have her docket rescheduling in place within a day or two. I am a proactive person. I like, I was a Girl Scout. I like to be prepared. The misdemeanor court administrative judge validates what Judge Saldana is doing. I think it's a very good idea. Judge John Longoria said he also worries about the number of people who show up for jury duty every day. Our jury room gets about five to 600 people uh, a day and that could spread like wildfire if it gets here. So why not try to monitor right at the entrance? He's talking about screening everyone at the courthouse entrances. We check for people coming in with weapons. Uh, why not check for people coming in with a fever? Whether other courts decide to follow Judge Saldana's lead is up to the individual judges. Each judge has a choice on how to run their courtroom. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. It is Super Tuesday, and Texans will head to the polls today to cash their vote. The polls open in a little less than an hour at 7 this morning, and they will stay open until 7 this evening. If you live in Bear County, you can vote at any polling location. That also holds true for several other South Texas counties. Just be sure to bring a state-issued ID to see all the polling locations near your work, home, or school. And to follow the latest election news, just head over to KSET.com's Vote 2020 page. And the League of Women Voters of the San Antonio area want to you to know your protected voting rights. Here are a few things to know before you go to the polls. If you're a parent, you're allowed to take your child into the voting booth with you, and you can stay as long as you need. You can ask for help from a poll worker or anyone of your choice as long as it's not your employer or a representative from your union. And if you cannot read or write, you can bring an interpreter who can translate for you. You can also take any papers in with you, including a sample ballot or campaign material. Just be sure you take it out of the voting booth with you. And this one is one of the most important. You have the right to vote if you are in line at a polling location when it closes at 7 o'clock. It is against the law for anyone to kick you out of that line. If someone is trying to do it, be sure to stay in line and then call the Bear County Election Office. That number is 210-335-VOTE. It's not only election day here in Texas, but in 13 other states as well. After several Democratic candidates dropped out, they joined Joe Biden on the campaign trail in Dallas to endorse the former vice president. CNN's Camilla Bernal has the latest in the Democratic race for president. 
Moderate 2020 Democrats coalescing around a single candidate. I am delighted to endorse and support Joe Biden for president. <laughs> On Monday night in Dallas, Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar officially announcing their support for Joe Biden. We do not, in our party, want to just eke by a victory. We want to win big, and Joe Biden can do that. The former vice president locking down endorsements from a number of moderates after his victory in South Carolina. Now he's calling for unity. This country needs to be healed. Yes, sir. The president needs to be healed. With a narrowing field, Biden's prospects are improving. If he takes home big wins on Tuesday, he can narrow the field to a two-man contest with current frontrunner Bernie Sanders. Let me be very clear. It is no surprise. They do not want me to become president. The Vermont senator is saying he's ready to take on the political establishment. We're going to have to have the highest voter turnout in the history of this country, and I think our campaign is uniquely suited to be able to do that. But both candidates must still contend with Senator Elizabeth Warren and Mike Bloomberg. 2020 is your chance to choose a president and I'm ready to get to work. I would be able to attract moderate Republicans who like some of Trump's policies but don't necessarily like him. In Washington, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Our coverage of election results will begin at 7 this evening on KZ-TV and KZ.com. Steve Spreester will be hosting a Spreester session as the results start coming in from around the country and, of course, around the state. Be sure to tune in to our hour-long night beat as well. Right, join us tomorrow on GMSA for our continuing Super Tuesday coverage. And as always, we will have the latest information on KZ.com. We'll be here tomorrow morning. We will be here and have all the results for you. 610, 65 degrees. Physical books are still important in a child's development. Later on GMSA, we're going to see the impact regular books have rather than just e-books. And teenagers aren't just bullied in person. More and more, they are saying that they are being bullied online or through text. We'll see how these encounters can affect mental health coming up after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's going to be a, kind of a bumpy night tonight, but we've got the entire KSAT weather team ready, standing by, and ready to keep you informed. Make sure you download the app. Have you ever been picked on because of how you talked or looked or dressed? I had a lisp and I was tomboyish. Growing up, I wasn't bullied up until I got to my freshman year of high school. And coincidentally, that was when I first started wearing the headscarf. USC developmental psychologists surveyed 559 students in grades 6 through 12 about their experiences with online bullying. They want to know if cyber victimization leads to poor mental health or if people experiencing depression and anxiety are more likely to be bullied. The answer is it's both, right? So if you are depressed, you know, you it, it could lead to more cyber victimization and also cyber victimization leads to depression. Researchers surveyed the students at three different times. Students who reported high levels of online bullying at time point one also reported high levels of depressive symptoms at time point three. Students who said they had high levels of depressive symptoms at time point one reported high levels of online bullying at time point two. Those with high levels of depression at time point two also reported more cyber victimization at time point three. Experts say parents can support their child's mental health by pointing out their strengths with others. You can say things like, you're really good at thinking about how others might feel, or you're really standing up for people, but don't be tempted to ban phone or computer use. It's better to have them be able to manage the experience than you know, to take away the device. Experts say parents, teachers, and schools need to continue creating guidelines for online behavior that give students strategies for protecting themselves, as well as procedures for reporting incidents. And you can find more information on stopbullying.gov. Time to check on the roadways. It's been busy in spots. How's it looking now? <clears throat> Still looking pretty good. This is uh, 35 of St. Mary's, and we're scrolling over to various cameras. I-10 at the Y, no issues there. So the fortunate news is that there's no accidents. The bad news is, and the only reason I bring this up, is because I had a couple of city employees ask me yesterday in light of the uh, mayor's announcement, yes, you have to go to work today and tomorrow and the next day. So 
Everyone report to work as normal, as usual, no delays, and uh, no delays out there on the roadway. 21 Hildebrand North and Southbound Lane still running smoothly. Ooh, Ooh there you go. Yeah. 35 at Evans. Yeah, unfortunately, that's, though, that's, that's, normal. that's normal for those folks. Just like the folks coming in from Bernie, uh, by the time we reach 715, 720, that tends to be about an hour commute just to reach 1604. Oh, what a nightmare that is. And there was a lot of construction on 281 this morning at 3 a.m., which I guess is good to get it done overnight. Oh, yes. But, oh, what a mess that it was. It is a mess. Speaking yeah. of a mess in Nashville, and I just got a notice yep. from the storms last night, still an unspecified number of fatalities. Yes, and there's actual video that you can see the tornado moving across Nashville. There, there's a lot of damage here. Now take a look at some of the pictures we're now getting in this morning. Uh, the damage is pretty significant, and when a tornado goes through a highly populated area like that, it's uh, it's never very good. But uh, I should say heavy, highly populated. Uh, but you see some of the damage there, and uh, there's going to be a lot of cleanup uh, going on. I'd, I'd say through today, probably uh, through the week. But uh, our thoughts go out to those folks in Nashville. Hopefully, uh, there's not a whole lot of injuries that are coming out of this. And that was a storm system that was well off to our north and east, but it, it produced a lot of severe weather yesterday from uh, places like Missouri to Kentucky over to Tennessee. And that storm system is moving away. Here's what we're watching. Uh, actually, let's take a little closer look. There's uh, all the reports and there's still a lot coming in, by the way. Uh, and there is that tornado around Nashville. They did add that one, which they're going to go out and survey the damage and see just how strong it was. Uh, and look and see how potentially how strong those winds were. The, the storms are moving away now, so that's good news for Nashville, but there will be a little bit more severe weather, especially down to the south around Alabama, I think a little bit later today. For us, this is what we're watching. This storm system here south of Arizona, this area of low pressure is going to be moving into Texas tonight, and it will give us a chance for some strong to severe storms. Now, I don't think it'll be as bad as what they were dealing with up there uh, overnight, but uh, we still could see some strong storms of our own. Right now, very humid. Temperatures sitting at 62 degrees, 60 the dew point, and calm winds. So our dew point, our temperature getting close together. We got calm winds that uh, oftentimes will allow for some fog to develop, and we are seeing that. 63 Bernie Stage, 64 Rio Medina, 66 right now. And divine cloudy skies there in the big picture. 60s and uh, some 50s. Fredericksburg over to Junction, seeing some upper 50s. There's some slightly drier air trying to work in from the north. So. Numbers will be a little bit cooler uh, up there in the hills. And uh, the visibility down to about two and a half miles. Gonzales to Braunfels still a problem there. A mile and a quarter, three quarters of a mile in Beeville. So it's this corridor here that is really seeing the fog. Uvalde reporting a little bit too, down to a mile visibility. Forecast for today, we're going to be up around 80 degrees. It'll be warm, it'll be humid. There is a chance for a couple showers this afternoon, about a 30% shot. And then as we go into tonight, that's when the real action starts to move in. We're going to fast forward to midnight and you see the storms developing out west. So Rock Springs Junction down to U Valley, that's where the storms uh, could be strong to severe once they pop up. And then these will move into the hill country, move towards San Antonio. This is at five o'clock. We've moved back the time frame just a little bit. So I'm thinking here in San Antonio, five to six a.m. when these storms could be moving in a broken line here. And uh, this will sweep east by 7 o'clock. And then by midday, we'll just have a few clouds. A lot of the showers on the back side of the system will probably be to our north. And we'll get some sun tomorrow afternoon. The severe weather risk has shifted a little bit too. So more uh, into the hill country. We're still talking about a slight risk here. And that means uh, wind and hail are going to be the main threats. And it's just a moderate risk. Uh, but it is there. Flooding, more of a slight risk. Tornadoes on the low end. And as far as rainfall is concerned, the bigger numbers will be up there around Kerrville and Fredericksburg, I think, up close to an inch, maybe even higher in localized areas. And then San Antonio, perhaps up to half an inch, depending on how that line sets up, and the lower numbers will be down uh, to our south. So the forecast for today, uh, again, in the uh, low 80s for highs, and then overnight tonight, we'll drop down into the 70s. Here's how rain chances play out, I think. 60% chance by 3 o'clock, so our time frame uh, for our best rain chances will be 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. 73 on your Wednesday, 70 Thursday, 70 Friday. Some more clouds perhaps late in the weekend with more rain chances next week. Oh, we get through this, so we have some nice weather behind it. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, Thursday and Friday will be really nice. Great, thank you. Yeah. 621 and 65 degrees. If you live in Harlandale ISD, you can check out a free book without a library card. We'll learn more about the district's first free little library. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K.
In America, we all count, no matter where we call home, how we worship, or who we love. And the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Because this is the count that informs where hundreds of billions in funding will go each year for things like education, health care, and programs that touch us all. Shape your future. Start here. Learn more at 2020census.gov. Take a moment to unwind with Lindor. A milk chocolate shell with a smooth melting center. From the Lint Master Chocolatiers. Lindor. Only from Lint. <laughs> Kim is now demonstrating her congestion. Save it, slime ball. I've upgraded to Mucinex. We still have 12 hours to Australia. Mucinex lasts 12 hours, so I'm good. Now move <laughs> Mucinex has a patented tablet that lasts three times longer for 12 hours. And welcome back. It is 625. The final little library at Harlandale ISD has been installed. It's the Sosa Parent Education Center. The little libraries are part of an initiative to encourage people to donate, borrow, and share books with others in the community. The director for the Sosa Parent Education Center says the center is the perfect place for the library because it serves as a hub for the Harlandale District. And one of the district's biggest pushes is literacy. We're hoping that this will help either parents read to their children, their children read more, and in turn uh, improve their literacy skills. The library is open to the public, and you don't even need a library card. You can just take a book. And ah. You can also leave books as well. That's cool. I like that. Your time now is 626 and it's 62 degrees outside. Local leaders are criticizing the federal government for how they're handling the coronavirus in San Antonio. We'll hear more reactions as concerns continue to grow around the city. And it is Super Tuesday. It's time for us Texans to get out and vote. We'll update you on what you need to know before you head to the polls. And another live look outside with the roads through Trans Guide. Things running smooth today. Marcus Trujillo's not all that busy. Yet. Let's hope it stays that way for him. We've got an update for you coming up. It's not the first thing anyone wants to see when they wake up. Men with masks pointing guns at them. But that was the reality for some people on the west side this morning. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. 14 states and one U.S. territory all voting today as part of Super Tuesday. I'm Inez de la in Virginia, and I'll have all the details coming up. And outside with live cam, I think that's the tower somewhere in there. A little foggy this morning. Or maybe that's humidity. It's all that combination. Right? I think <laughs> could be a lot of that. Yep, well, it's, uh, it's Tuesday. It's March 3rd. It's Election Day, and I jinxed you. I'm sorry. A little bit. Uh -oh. Not too bad, though. Oh. Not too bad. David, why'd you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not his fault. He was fault. having such a great day. <laughs> no, it's, it's, and all it's, of a sudden, bam. So what happened? Well, we're looking at Highway 90 right now. And that's what I just had up there a minute ago on Trans Guide. So we're looking at the westbound access road of Highway 90, just past 36th Street, right before you get to Highway 151 to the entrance ramp. And the access road right now being blocked, but not that big. You just kind of have to go maybe like a half a block detour. When I show you on Trans Guide, you'll see it's just a little slight inconvenience due to an 18-wheeler that decided to park sideways on the road. Uh-oh, that's always a problem. Never good. Don't well, say the weather's quiet, okay? <laughs> yeah, say please. It. Say it. Say it. And what have, a great looking day. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're going to be um, worried about this stuff tonight. Yeah, I think tonight uh, is when we could see some of those storms moving through San Antonio. Really, it's almost towards... Uh, sunrise tomorrow is, is kind of the time frame that we're looking at. In the meantime, if you're uh, sending the kids off to the bus stop, it's fairly warm this morning. We're actually dropped off a little bit. We're in the low 60s right now, but cloudy skies, not a whole lot of wind out there. And we should be in the 70s this afternoon with mostly cloudy skies and easterly winds picking up, bringing in more moisture, so it's going to be pretty sticky out there. Let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, one thing little, sort of interesting to see here is we are seeing temperatures drop a little bit. We've seen that here in San Antonio. There is some drier air trying to work in from the north. This could be a player today in our temperatures uh, because uh, right now we've dropped into the mid 50s now here in Curvo, 62 here in San Antonio. Still some warm, humid stuff off to the south. And this is also going to play a role in how much fog we see this morning. But the visibility now starting to come down here in San Antonio, uh, down to about three miles, about a quarter of a mile there in Pleasanton. Uh, New Braunfels still dealing with some fog as well. Also Uvalde with uh, visibility down to about a mile there. Forecast for today, 
Still think we're in the 60s through 10 o'clock, 73 by noon, 10 cloudy skies. Maybe a few peaks of sun this afternoon. There's an outside chance for shower. Not a big problem today. Again, it's tonight and early tomorrow morning where we start to see some of those storms moving in. And uh, the threat for a couple strong storms is, is still there, especially across the whole country. But we'll take a closer look at that, time it out for you, and get you set for your Wednesday coming up here in just a few minutes. But as Marcus alluded to, there's a few issues out there now as we uh, go down towards, what is it, Highway 90 and 151? Now? Highway 90 151. So as we take a look at it from the map, doesn't look to be too bad. You see a little bit of discoloration there for the access road. So the green on the higher level, those would be the main lanes. And those lanes down below, just off to the side, that's going to be the access road of westbound Highway 90. Here's what it really looks like. Here is the access road. So these are the lanes off of westbound Highway 90 exiting for Highway 151. And then this is the access road that also feeds into uh, westbound Highway 151. And there is that tractor trailer there blocking the lane. So these uh, three lanes of traffic, they're having to merge. Just go around a little bit here. Then you can continue on, but it is an inconvenience and we are starting to get stacking. There are quite a few folks that use that exit, that access road uh, to use that entrance ramp to continue on westbound Highway 90. So just as soon as we can get that cleared up and out of the way, we'll get folks moving once again. David and Leslie. Thanks very much, Marcus. New this morning, a locked door couldn't keep out trouble for some people in a West Side home. San Antonio police say four masked gunmen were able to kick down the door and rob them overnight. Katrina Weber has that story. She's live at Public Safety Headquarters. So has anyone heard Katrina? No, no injuries, but chances are those people are still shaken up by what they went through very early this morning. They told police that those gunmen pointed their guns straight at their faces. The officers who responded to that home on Winchip Farm, which is near Culebra and Callahan Roads, found out the gunmen also fired shots at the home. The people who live there told them the robbers who were wearing masks kicked in their door around 1 o'clock this morning, threatened them with the guns, then took off with their cell phones and a purse. Police were able to track one of those cell phones and it led them to an empty car parked a few miles away. Now, it seems that may have been the getaway car, but the gunman also got away. Police did search the area, but didn't find them. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Local leaders are trying to ease tensions as the coronavirus concerns continue to grow in San Antonio. The city currently in a state of emergency after the mayor made the announcement yesterday. It comes as North Star Mall is currently closed because an infected person went to the mall on Saturday. The mayor says the situation in the city is under control and he and other leaders are working to keep the public threat low. Meanwhile, Judge Nelson Wolf is expressing his displeasure with the federal officials and how they are handling the case. This is not meant to alarm people. I think we've got good health officials here, but we've had our problems with the CDC and how they've handled things, and we're not very appreciative of it. You can find all of our reporting on the coronavirus right now on KSAT.com, including more reactions from local leaders. Well, it is Election Day. Polls will open at 7 o'clock this morning, and if you can't make it out until later, remember you are able to vote if you're in line before the polls close at 7. If someone's trying to kick you out before you cast your ballot, stay in line. Call the Bear County Elections Office. The number, by the way, put it in your phone now, 210-335-VOTE. However, Texas isn't the only state voting today. It's called Super Tuesday for a reason. Voters in 13 other states will elect delegates for the Democratic primary. Texas has 228 delegates up for grab today, which is dwarfed only by California's 416. North Carolina is the third largest state today. They've got 110 delegates available. By the end of the day, about a third of all delegates in the Democratic presidential primary will be allocated. Well, those delegates are up for grabs right now, and as some of the Super Tuesday states in the eastern time zone, they've already started voting. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera has more on the Democratic race for president from Virginia. Good morning. 14 states and one territory all voting today as part of Super Tuesday. States like California, Texas, and Virginia with over 1,300 delegates at play. Just hours before the biggest contest of the primary season, Joe Biden getting a major boost. Pete Buttigieg and now Amy Klobuchar both dropping out of the race for president and endorsing the former vice president. But he will also govern with his heart. 
Biden emotional as he accepted Mayor Pete's endorsement. He reminds me of my son, Bo. Biden's landslide win in South Carolina reshaping the race as the party's moderates seem ready to come together to stop Bernie Sanders from winning the nomination. But Sanders undeterred. The political establishment is getting nervous. And they look at rallies like this at St. Paul and they say, what's going on here? The Vermont senator drawing the biggest crowds of anyone in the race and arguing. Joe is a decent guy. He's just wrong on the issues. Super Tuesday will also be the first time Mike Bloomberg is on the ballot, making it clear he's not going anywhere. I haven't even faced the voters once. Tulsi Gabbard and Elizabeth Warren are also still in the race. Polls will begin closing at 7 p.m. Eastern in Virginia and Vermont. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News in Alexandria, Virginia. And be sure to join us later on today as we monitor the election results. Steve Spreester will hold a Spreester session starting at 7 o'clock this evening with live results as they come in, as well as local analysis. The Night Beat will also be an hour long tonight for more election coverage. If you will not be up that late, you can always join us tomorrow on GMSA for the results and reactions from Super Tuesday. Hey, the Spurs lost some ground in their playoff push last night. They lost to the Indiana Pacers 116 to 111. The Spurs were without two of their big men, LaMarcus Aldridge and Jakob Pertl. They're both dealing with some injuries, so now the Spurs hit the road. They will play again tonight, this time in Charlotte. They'll be taking on the Hornets at 6 o'clock. They're on the road for three in a row. There's that matchup for you. So. And uh, the other guys that we are kind yeah. of racing yeah. against, all one, you they said? Won. Yeah. Spurs are now like 12th in the West. So. That bad? It went all the way. Are you, you're exaggerating. No. No? It, that's how far they dropped because the other guys won. 12th? So. Yeah, but it wasn't, it's only like a half game. It's not, it's not like way 12. It's just, it's just 12. a little 12? Not a big 12? <laughs> just a little 12. 12. Okay. <laughs> you can look at it like that. 639 <laughs> and wow, it's down to 62 degrees. Hmm. Hmm. Ditch the iPhones and iPads. Tell your kids to grab a book. We're going to hear why some local book advocates re say reading a physical book will encourage learning and development. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back. It is now 643. iPads, iPhones, or streaming devices dominate our lives and our children's as well. But local book advocates say a child reaching for a book over a digital device can help them grow and develop so much more. Sarah Costa spoke to one of the organizers with the upcoming book festival about why books are still important for child growth and how you can encourage your children to read more. You know, a book gives a kid um, the chance to develop their own imagination. Clay Smith is the literary director of the upcoming 8th Annual San Antonio Book Festival. He says a child reading a book instead of using a digital device can help them grow so much more. Smith says a good writer will always leave room for imagination and take children on journeys to different places that can get them sucked into the plot of the book. The plot is really, um, you know, makes you want to turn the pages. That does so much for a child and it teaches them, I would say, self-confidence and self-reliance because they're just sitting there kind of alone with the book. Living in a time where children are conditioned to reach for an iPad or an iPhone, how can parents help their children break that habit and have them reach for a book instead? Smith says if your child is competitive, set challenges for them through reading. Ask your kid if they can read 100 books over the summer or 10 over the Christmas break or 5 over spring break. Make it a sort of competition. He also says let them read what interests them and not set the bar too high. Because a kid who is drawn in even by a really simple story will read more and then that kid is more likely to become a reader as an adult. But most importantly, be a good example. Catch the great white whale and I'll give you the gold. Be a reader yourself. Set an example. You know, show, let your kids see you reading. Smith says you can get your children excited about reading with the many children's activities at the upcoming free book festival on April 4th. Some of the events include children's writers bringing their books to life through performances every half hour, crafts like making bookmarks and marbled paper, and meeting authors. He says he hopes the festival can inspire children to become lifetime readers. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. All right, we have that accident over there at 151 and 90. Marcus, any progress on clearing it? Nope. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> it's going to be with us uh, throughout the morning commute. Uh, what we've got, uh, we're going to have to wait for a King Kong record to get out there and fix this situation. We have uh, the access road being affected, not the main lanes and not those lanes, not the main lanes of westbound Highway 90 and not the lanes of westbound Highway 90 that exit for Highway 151, but the access road. So let's take a look. This is what we have here. And as you see that 18 wheeler there, what you can't see is the tractor of that 18 wheeler. That, uh, from what I've been told, that's actually on its side. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as we take a look at the roadways, it's going to be a while before we can get King Kong Wrecker out there. You get that uprighted and out of the way so that they can remove the trailer and open up those lanes. Makes a nice barricade right there. I hope the driver's okay, but then again, you got to wonder, this, it's not wet. It's <coughs> like a dangerous curve. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, how do you get like that? Tomorrow morning, however, it's a whole different ball game as far as the commute goes, it sounds like. Yeah, there probably will be some wet roads tomorrow. Uh, there could be some flooding in spots, although it's looking right now that the heaviest of the rain is going to be up across the hill country where we could see some pretty decent numbers. Uh, right now, we're starting to see a little bit of fog out there. Uh, visibility has come down some here in San Antonio. It's not to the point where it's uh, just really bad, but uh, we may see visibility come down a little bit more before it's all said and done. We're also noticing the temperature coming down a bit. We were in the mid 60s earlier. We've dropped down now to 62. There's some slightly drier air trying to work in from the north, and that's helping us a little bit with the temperatures. 64 Port SA, 63 right now at Randolph, and temperatures are in the 50s up in the hill country. That's some of that drier air I was talking about. 59 right now in Fredericksburg, 57 in Kerrville, and then you'll run into some warmer numbers as you work south. 60s, even some 70s on the map, uh, where it's much more humid down to our south. Dew points are in the upper 60s there. They fall off those some as you work north. 55 the dew point in Kerrville. Nonetheless, I think it is going to be a sticky day. We're not really going to lose the humidity until tonight, until those storms sweep through and uh, we'd see all that humidity get pushed east. Here's the big picture. Uh, severe weather this morning. Uh, some of the reports still coming in from Nashville. Not good. Uh, so unfortunately, some more fatalities are now being reported with that tornado that moved through Nashville overnight. There's some more severe weather also developing in parts of Alabama. That storm system is moving away, and then we're watching this area of low pressure here. This is the one that's going to be moving into Texas, and it's going to give us our chance for storms as we go into tonight and early on Wednesday. Out ahead of it, a lot of cloud cover. There is some rain out in West Texas. And obviously, it is uh, humid. Again, 62 degrees at the airport, and the temperatures, as we talked about, in the 60s at this point. We talked about the visibility. So the forecast, close to 80, I think, this afternoon. We will put some rain chances in there, about a 30% shot as we get into the afternoon. Still anything we see today, probably just isolated and fairly light. It's tonight when we really start to get those storms going. This is midnight, and we see a line of storms developing out west. That'll push east. This is 5 a.m. and probably be on our doorstep here in San Antonio. So 5 to 7 a.m. probably the time frame. Now that we're going to be watching for these storms moving through San Antonio, and then uh, it'll push east. On the back side of it, we'll get some breezy winds, some clouds still, maybe a couple showers across the hill country tomorrow too on the back side of this system. Uh, as far as severe weather goes, we've shifted this just a little bit further to the north and west. So it is the hill country that's sort of the main zone here where we could get some of those stronger storms still. San Antonio is not out of the woods. Uh, I still think we could see a couple of strong storms and the potential threats are going to be wind and hail. Those are the two main ones, but uh, there could be some flooding in spots and the tornado threat thankfully is low. Maximum rainfall potential up to an inch, maybe a little bit more in the hill country. The numbers should be pretty good there. It drops off to about a half an inch in San Antonio and then you'll get some lower totals uh, down to the south, about a quarter of an inch uh, forecast overnight. Uh, rain chances pick up after midnight, so 60% chance 3 a.m. Uh, we up it to a 70% chance by 6 a.m. And tomorrow, 73, a little bit cooler. 70 on Thursday, sunny skies. Thursday and Friday look great. We'll get some more clouds over the weekend and maybe some more rain chances by early next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you much. Yeah. It is 649 and 62 degrees. It's getting colder. Yeah, okay. a little bit. From fireworks to lightning strikes, kids learn best when they are awe-inspired. Tomorrow on GMSA, we are going to see a technique to spark your child's interest. And there's that live cam shot one more time. Fog is clearing up a little bit because you can see the tower now. That's good. Get ready for a little bit of rain today and a whole lot overnight.
And this morning's GMA first look from honeymoon to quarantine. We don't know what would happen to us. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster for us. Rachel and Tyler Torres's bond has been um, tested like few newlyweds. First aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship and now living under quarantine for 14 days at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas because of the coronavirus. We have never tested positive for coronavirus. Yeah. And I think but now their future uncertain following news that a woman was released from quarantine at the same facility before a final test for the virus came back positive. The mayor of San Antonio issued a state of emergency. We are really being held um, by the Texas government. They've put up quite a bit of roadblock for us uh, to get home. Coming up at 7 a.m., GMA has full live coverage of the coronavirus. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with what you need to know this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. They opened their eyes and got a scary surprise. Four men with masks and guns pointed straight at their faces. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That was the reality for some people who were sleeping in a West Side home. Officers who responded to that home on Windsheep Farm, which is near Culebra and Callahan Roads, found out that those robbers also fired shots at the home. The people who live there told them they woke up about one o'clock this morning to those robbers kicking in their doors. They say they were wearing masks. They also threatened them with the guns, took off with their cell phones and a purse. Police were able to track one of those cell phones and found it in an empty car a couple of miles away. Now they say that may have been the getaway car, but those robbers were long gone. The police did search for them, but did not find them. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, everybody, the polls open in just a few minutes, so be sure you head out to vote today if you haven't done so already. You can vote at any polling location in Bear County if you live in the county. You see that third point right there? For any information on voting on the candidates, just head over to KSAT.com and click on our Vote 2020 tab, and be sure to tune in tonight at 7 o'clock as we monitor the results. Let's check on the roadways once again. We've got some big problems out there this morning. We have a number of issues. Let's get to the accidents right now. Uh, these major accidents coming in on the east side, far east side, I-10 at Field Road. That's going to be outside 1604. We also have Stone Oak at La Santera uh, Boulevard. Keep that in mind, major accident stopping traffic. And then this is on the access road of westbound Highway 90 involving that 18-wheeler. We do have King Kong record on the scene, so hopefully won't be there too much longer. Justin? We're sitting at 62 degrees. We should be up close to 80 today. Cloudy skies for the most part, maybe a few peaks of sun. 30% chance of rain today, but that increases as we get uh, early into tomorrow morning. About a 70% chance of storms. We'll be watching the morning commute tomorrow very close. All right, thank you, and thank you so much for being with us, everybody. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great Tuesday, and get out and vote.